In this tutorial, we're going to look at the program ArcGIS and how we can use this to create maps and various elements of data analysis. However, I'm first going to start with just taking you through some of the rudimentary elements of the ArcGIS package, how to access it and some of the first steps that you have to take as you just start to use the software. So the first thing is to find it. And I've created a little program shortcut link here, ArcGIS. And you may see here we've got a series of different tools available. The main icons that you're most interested in are Arc Catalog, Arc Globe, Arc Map, and Arc Scene. And they have different functions depending on what kind of data you wish to work with. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're almost entirely going to focus on Arc Map. And you'll see that I'm using version 10. 0.3.1, which is the most recent version right now. So I'm just going to click that. Now the ArcGIS package is a very large and very complex package and it has takes some time to load on occasion. So do be patient. What you need to do is ensure that you save your document and your work frequently to make sure that you don't lose anything because on occasion the program may crash. So here we go. So this is what it looks like as we load up. We have a main window for ArcGIS on the outside and we also have a getting started window here. In here it contains your recent maps. You can load various other map documents that you wish to work from and you can also utilize some standard layouts and various templates that you can create yourself or you can just use these standard ones built into the package. I rarely utilize these because I prefer to make my own. Okay, for the most part, you don't really need this window. It's just there, just makes life a little bit easier. So I do recommend saying do not show this dialog in future and just click OK just to get rid of it. So I'm just going to resize my window to fit into my display here. So as you can see in this version, I've just automatically loaded up into an area that says Layers. Okay, in this particular area, I'm in what's called Layout View. Layout view allows you to create a map in kind of a desktop publishing setting. But what we really want to do is just have a view that shows us our data. Now, at the moment, we don't have any, but we're going to switch to the data view by using the view button at the top of the bar. We just click that and we're going to data view. And can you see that we change here into a, a blank screen? Now, the way it works is that we have these floating bars of icons that can be moved around, they can be turned off, they can also be turned on by right clicking in the area where there are no bars. It shows you a huge list of different toolbars that are available. These toolbars contain various tools that you may use during the course of your, uh, of your work. You won't need all of them on at any one time, but I do recommend having standard and tools available and on occasion layout because you will be doing quite a lot of manipulation of map. And I tend to try and dock these in a reasonably neat fashion because when you start adding more on, it's going to eat up quite a lot of screen space and you don't really want that. So I just go through how the system is comprised. So on the left hand side here we have what's called a table of contents. We see layers and there's different icons here at the top. These basically control the visibility of your data and they treat them as layers. So that does mean that sometimes one piece of data will be underneath another one. One will be on top. You might not be able to see the one that's underneath. So you can reorganize the data in the layers in order to manipulate what data you see. You can always turn it on and turn it off and you can do various manipulations with that data using the table of contents. Now, the most um, important part of the ArcMap program is this white box here, where everything pretty much happens. This is just a space where we're going to insert data. Now, as I move my mouse around, you see in the bottom corner down here that we've got some coordinates, unknown units, it says at the moment. So that's basically where the GIS magic, the spatial magic, happens in the program. 
and you will manipulate data, zoom in, zoom out, you will see maps and various things as we work through the course. On the right hand side you see that I've got some tabs, catalog and search. These are essentially shortcuts into a whole variety of different things that you need. Catalog is um, available as a separate program, separate executable, but you can use this quick link here. It basically is a file manager for GIS data. And in a few tutorials, I'll go through how GIS data is stored as shape files and as rasters. They are different to normal files that you may work with, like images or Word documents. So there's some things that you need to consider. So the catalog is a really useful piece of software that allows you to create shape files that you can then start adding data into, but also to manipulate, move, store, save data, copy files, and so on. And you can use the catalog for that. Search is a tool that will allow us to search for even more tools within the ArcGIS package. For example, I want to convert my file format from one thing into another, I might use an ASCII to raster tool. If I type that in, it gives me a list of all the different tools that meet my keywords. And you can see if I pick this one out, and I just click that to load the tool. So there's many, many tools which are kind of hidden away behind the front end of the ArcMap program. Now, I want to add another tab in here which will really illustrate the tools that we use. And to do that, I'm going to click this button here on the toolbar called Arc Toolbox. I click that. We'll bring up a window of all of these tools that are available. And if I just click a few of these, you can see a variety of different ones that are available. And this is really where the power of ArcMap lies with the really excellent tool set that it has which you can levy whenever you really need to. You can also create your own tools as part of your own work using the programming language Python. So I'm going to dock this onto the side now and you see that if I click and drag the bar that these blue icons appear and I want to dock mine onto the side here, okay? The little pin will turn it into auto hide and you can see here it auto hides now on the side. A useful docking functionality, keeping all the tools you need within easy reach. Now, when you first turn on your GIS, you may find that some of the more advanced tools within things like Spatial Analyst or 3D Analyst toolboxes may not work. So let's just see if I can just trigger an error. And you get this here, tool not licensed. Now at Bangor we have the license and at many universities around the world you will have the license to utilize most of the tools within the toolbox. Some of them are stock protected for various higher um, level licenses like Arc Info for example. But don't worry about that. For the most of the tools that you'll need you'll be able to do it from this particular version of Arc Map. So if you get this error here because we haven't turned on the spatial analyst extension so I'll show you how to do that now. It's really simple. All we're going to do is click Customize on the toolbar at the top. And we're going to go to Extensions. And we just click that. And you see here that the extensions we want to use are all blank. So we just turn them on. Now click Close. So now if we go back to the tool we tried, it loads perfectly first time. Okay, so if you do get an error saying that your tool is not licensed, you need to make sure that you've turned on the particular extension that you wish to use. Now there are some, as I said, that you won't be able to use, and they tend to be quite obscure tools, which are mostly to do with the manipulation of vector data. And I, during my daily life, I rarely come across these. So the chances of you having to do something that requires an elevated license would be quite rare. So, that's basically the rough introduction into what the GIS software is and how it's kind of organized. You're now ready to move on and go to the next level of our tutorials.